Good morning. I decided I couldn't be outdone by Evie Colbeck and her bouncing on the trampoline. So I thought we'd do something a bit different. So, good morning and welcome to worship. There must be more than this. Oh, breath of God, come breathe within. There must be So after the excitement of the uh, earlier opening shots, we've come down back to earth again. A uh, coffee and a cake. So we've obviously been at Falling Foss. What have you been up to this week? Here's your photos. I would rather be 
be No place I would rather be Than here in your love Here in your love No place I would rather be No place I would rather be No place I would rather be Than here in your love Here in your love Set a fire down in my soul That I can't contain Lord, as we reflect on our photos that we've submitted this week, we wish to say thank you for so many things in our life. We thank you for our families. We thank you for the beautiful environment around us. We thank you for food and for drink. We thank you for the opportunity to enjoy your world. We thank you for our children. And we thank you for friendship and all that means to us. We love you, Lord, and we thank you for each and every one of these blessings. And in a moment of quiet, we bring our personal thanks to you. Lord, you are amazing. Your love never changes. And for this we give you thanks. Amen. Reading from Acts chapter 2 The Holy Spirit comes at Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, Are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in his own native language? Parthians, Medes and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, 
both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said they've had too much wine. Today we celebrate Pentecost and it's also Aldersgate Sunday, the day on which we remember what is famously known as the conversion of John Wesley. John Wesley was a man with a mission and that mission was to take the saving grace of Christ as he put it himself, not to those who needed it, but to those who needed it most. Ordained as a priest in the Church of England and fully involved in the work of the Gospel, John sensed that this wasn't enough. There was something missing from his life. At the end of 1752, John and his brother Charles were on board a ship bound for Georgia. John was going to take up the position as parish priest. During the voyage, a huge storm hit the ship and even the hardiest of sailors were terrified. They were in fear of losing their lives. Face to face with death, the Wesley brothers discovered that they themselves were in fear of losing their lives. In the midst of the chaos and fear and sheer panic, there was a group of Christians, German Christians, Moravians, who calmly sang psalms of praise to God during the wildest of storms. Recalling this experience in his diary, John Wesley wrote, I asked one of them afterwards, was you not afraid? He answered, I thank God, no. I asked, but was not your women and children afraid to die? He replied mildly, no, our women and children were not afraid to die. Despite his own beliefs and faith, John Wesley knew that he himself was afraid to die. Sometime later, during the year 1736, John engaged in further discussion with the Moravians, and he was asked a direct question by one of them. Does the Spirit of God bear witness with your spirit that you are a child of God? It was two years later, back in England and on the 24th of May, that John went unwillingly to a society in Aldersgate Street where he was to receive for himself the Spirit of God who warmed his heart and bore witness with his own spirit that yes, he was indeed a child of God. Does the Spirit of God bear witness with your spirit that you are a child of God? Have you received the fullness of God's spirit? Has your heart been strangely warmed? I share three things today concerning the gift of the Holy Spirit. First of all, the gift of the Holy Spirit is for all. In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit was a temporary gift given to specific people at specific times and for specific purposes. In Genesis chapter 41, it is by the Spirit of God that Joseph is enabled to interpret the king of Egypt's dreams. In Exodus chapter 31, it is by the Spirit of God that Bezalel, the son of Uri, the grandson of Hur from the tribe of Judah, was given the ability in all kinds of artistic work. In the book of Judges chapter 14, it is by the Spirit of God that Samson is given great strength. He tears a lion apart with his bare hands. 
Throughout the Old Testament, the prophets are anointed by the Spirit of God to foretell of God's plan and purpose. Throughout the Old Testament, the Spirit of God is active through his presence, though limited and restricted to working in one place at one time. The prophet Joel has a vision of God's Spirit being made available to all of God's people without limitation or restriction. Joel has a vision of God's Spirit being made available to young and old, to male and female, to rich and poor. In our reading from the Acts of the Apostles, we see Joel's vision being fulfilled. In verse 4 we read that they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. On the day of Pentecost, the Spirit came down and was available to all believers. Today, on the 23rd of May 2021, that same Spirit of our God is available to all people. Today, the Holy Spirit is waiting to fill his church with his presence. There are those who would say, well, all this happened long ago. The day of Pentecost was a one-off. And before his own heart was strangely warmed, I dare say that John Wesley subscribed to that same view. However, having experienced that life-changing presence of the Holy Spirit for himself, Mr. Wesley would realise how mistaken such a view was. The day of Pentecost was not a one-off. When he was ready, and only when he was ready, John Wesley was able to receive the Holy Spirit for himself. And we, when we are ready, and only when we are ready, can we too receive the Holy Spirit for ourselves. God's Holy Spirit is for all. Not for the selected few, for all. For you, for me, and for all believers. If ever you visited Cliff College during Derwent Week, when you walked along the main drive on arrival, you would have seen a banner overhead bearing the words, you will receive the Holy Spirit. And there you walked under that banner as you went into the grounds of the college and participated in those meetings, those gospel meetings. And then as you made your way home, you would pass under the same banner, but on the banner were written the words, Did you receive the Holy Spirit? The expectation being that you would encounter God and receive for yourself the Spirit of God. The gift of the Holy Spirit is for all. Secondly, the gift of the Holy Spirit is noticeable. It was certainly noticeable to those first believers. While they were gathered, there was a sound from the sky like a wind blowing, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. In John's Gospel, chapter 3, and verse 8, we find these words The wind blows wherever it wishes. You hear the sound it makes but you do not know where it comes from or where it is going. It is like that with everyone born of the Spirit. The story continues to unfold in Acts. Then they saw what looked like tongues of fire spread out and touch each person. John the Baptist, speaking of the Christ, said, He will baptise you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. On the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came with wind and fire and was so very noticeable to those first believers. They heard and they saw. And non-believers noticed too. They may not have seen the wind or, or, or heard the wind or the effects of it, or the fire, but they certainly noticed something different. 
about those early Christians. They heard them speaking in their own languages. God's Spirit gave his people the ability to speak in languages other than their own. In the same way that today some Christians are given the gift of tongues. But this is only one gift that the Spirit gives. If we read through the story of the early church, we discover many other noticeable gifts being bestowed on God's people by the Holy Spirit. There were those who received the gift of prophecy. Others received the gift of healing. Others were unable to teach and to preach the gospel. The good news of Jesus was preached with power. But above all, there was an overwhelming sense of love which flowed through the early church. How could anyone fail to notice the gift of the Holy Spirit and the difference he made in the lives of the believers and the impact on the early church? Speaking to his disciples, Jesus said, When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you shall receive power. Note that Jesus didn't say, if the Holy Spirit comes upon you, he said, when. Jesus expected the disciples to receive the Holy Spirit. And notice, Jesus didn't say, might, you might receive power. He said, you will receive power. A power that would be noticed. And I wonder, as people look at the church today, do they notice the effect that the Holy Spirit is having? Do they see the gifts of the Holy Spirit being exercised? Do they sense an overwhelming sense of love flowing through the church, through the lives of the believers? God's Spirit is moving, sometimes in spite of us. God touches and changes lives. Things do happen. I have been in meetings where people have spoken in tongues, where prophecies have been given. I have seen healings take place. Since the first day of Pentecost, these things have happened and continue to happen. In our reading from Acts, we find that those who noticed what was happening reckoned that the believers were drunk. This was the only way they could explain what they were seeing and hearing. All that people might accuse us in the church today of being drunk because God's Spirit is moving upon, among us and touching us and changing us. Methodism was born and flourished because people were filled to overflowing with God's Spirit. Ordinary men and women. And unless we continue to be filled with that same Spirit, then Methodism will die. The gift of the Holy Spirit is for all people, and the gift of the Holy Spirit is noticeable. And thirdly, the gift of the Holy Spirit is for a purpose. The purpose for which God's Spirit moves is to bring all people to a saving knowledge of Jesus as their Lord and Saviour. John Wesley believed that all people needed to be saved. He believed that all people could be saved. He believed that all people could know that they were saved. And he believed that all people could be saved to the uttermost, the four alls of Methodism. And the purpose of the church today is not for us to build our own little kingdoms where we feel safe, where we are comfortable. No, the purpose of the church is to proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God. In Jerusalem, when those first believers heard the gospel being proclaimed in their own languages, people were amazed to hear of the great and wonderful things that God had done. They were amazed because they heard people speaking their languages, and the people they heard speaking were foreigners. There was purpose in what happened. 
God's Spirit brought down the, the, the barrier of language to enable the Gospel to be communicated to all people. And today God's Spirit breaks down all known barriers for that same purpose. The barriers of age, of class, of race and so on. And when the barriers come down, the Spirit touches and transforms lives. People are given the assurance of salvation. Does the Spirit of God bear witness with your spirit that you are a child of God? Can you stand up and say with confidence that Jesus died for your sins? That he lives today and that when you die you are going to be with him in glory? Can you testify to the moving of God's Holy Spirit in your life? It's no good standing up and saying, well, I think Jesus died for me. I might be going to heaven when I die. I know that God's Spirit is around somewhere, but not sure where. Imagine for a moment you're going for a balloon ride. You climb into the basket and you throw the weights overboard and nothing happens. Something isn't right. Well, the purpose of the balloon is to lift you up into the air and in so doing it would fulfil its purpose. And the reason that it's not going anywhere is because it's deflated. You've got in a basket, you've thrown over the weights but forgot to somehow put the air in the balloon. And sometimes, you know, the church seems to be grounded because we are deflated, because we need to be filled with fresh air, with the presence, with the breath of God. Breathe on us, breath of God. Fill us with life in you. Fill the balloon with air and it will lift you to the heights. Fill the church with air, with the breath of God, with the Holy Spirit, the very presence of of God and will be lifted to the heights of glory. The Holy Spirit on this day of Pentecost is a gift for all. It should be a gift that is noticeable and it is for a purpose. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Break me. Melt me. Mould me. Fill me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Amen. In responding to Graham's message this morning, let's focus on that image of the balloon. Maybe you feel like a balloon that has previously been filled by the Holy Spirit, but now are somewhat deflated. Maybe you don't feel like you've ever been filled with the Holy Spirit. If you feel like either of those two, and I'd encourage you to stop and take time to soak in God's presence, to ask him for refilling or filling of the Holy Spirit. So whatever you are doing now, stop. Pause this video and spend time seeking God's Spirit. Let's pray. Father God, we pray for your Holy Spirit to come. Lord, would you fill us and strengthen us. Lord, we wait for you. Come, Holy Spirit.
I'd encourage you to take some extended time, maybe set aside half an hour, put on some chilled music and just spend time soaking in God's presence, asking for his Holy Spirit. May we be renewed together and re-fired up as his church so that we together can change this community and see his kingdom come. And so on this Pentecost Sunday, let us pray. Lord, we pray for the people of the world, for leaders of nations, for those with the power to influence the hearts and minds of millions. We pray especially for the people of the Holy Land, that there may be peace. May the coming of your spirit bring the fire of cleansing and the wind that renews. Lord, have mercy. Lord, we pray for the people of our nation, for those who influence the minds and the wills of the young, for those who are responsible for what we see on television, on the internet and in newspapers. We pray for those who are role models for others. May the coming of your spirit bring the fire of cleansing and the wind that renews. Lord, have mercy. Lord, we pray for the life of our church, for a deeper trust, a wider love and a longer lasting commitment that our worship our witness and our service may reach the heights of your throne. We pray for guidance as we seek your will for the life and mission of our church. Give us grace and joy and wisdom that we may discover the truth. May the coming of your spirit Bring the fire of cleansing and the wind that renews. Lord, have mercy. Lord, we pray for people that we know. For those that we know to be in need of you and your love. For those aching for your peace who truly desire to know more of you. For those longing for your health-giving, life-renewing touch and life-changing grace. In a moment of stillness, Lord, we bring before you those who are on our own hearts at this time. May the coming of your spirit bring the fire of cleansing and the wind that renews. Lord, have mercy. We pray for ourselves and for all that we must face in the coming days and months and years of our lives. For our times of aloneness, doubt and fear for our longing to be free, really free, as we know you long for us to be. For a renewal of our hearts and minds and lives, and for a chance to learn to love ourselves. May the coming of your spirit bring the fire of cleansing and the wind that renews. Lord, have mercy. We pray our prayers in the name of Christ, the merciful Lord. Amen. And a blessing for the coming week.
May the ripples of your love spread throughout the world. May you cope with the rapids and the moments of stillness. May the Holy Spirit bubble up inside you and give you peace. And as you meander throughout the week, may the Lord bless you. Amen. So don't forget, if there's anything that you need, we're all here to help. You know by now how to get in touch with us. So bye and see you all next week.